name is Andrea Miller and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator at Community Hospitals and Wellness Centers in Bryan. And I'd like to welcome you all to Live It Garden Grown. And I have a special guest with me today. I have Jenny McCarns and she is the coordinator of the Williams County, County Community Gardening Association. And you have a special project going on right now that I'm really um, hoping to promote today. You are trying to start a community garden, is well, that correct? That's, that's right. We'd like to see at least uh, one community garden here in Bryan where people can come together, build community, and enjoy gardening together and enjoy eating the produce. Absolutely. The best part. <laughs> Absolutely. I think those are all really good goals. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about when you plan to have these community gardens start up? Well, we're still in the stage of finding out who wants to garden, mm -hmm. but we'd really like to get this fall uh, the space to get everything going. In other words, get the soil ready for mm -hmm. spring planting and, right. and then in the spring, we can just dig right in and get things planted. <laughs> Absolutely, because sometimes, especially for the spring crops, you want to get things planted as soon as possible so that you have a longer growing season, right? Exactly, exactly. That's perfect. You know you're gardening. <laughs> Yay, for you. I garden a little bit. but <laughs> Yeah, that's great. But, so actually today, we're at the demonstration garden here in the test park. Right. Um, so I actually discovered this as I was walking by one day, and I hear that that's helped you to gain a little bit of interest right. in right. gardening. Um, you have a little setup here, and it's not a lot of space. It's you know just three small gardens. Uh -huh. um, do you want to show us around your garden a little bit and talk sure. about what you have growing? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I want to thank first of all Oberlin Farms for donating the the beds and uh, the soil to us. Uh, they've been uh, marvelous. But we have here in the first bed um, a cabbage, which is you can see is taking over. <laughs> And next to it is some purple basil and some lemon um, thyme. Oh, and it smells heavenly. Uh -huh. um, the marigolds, of course, are supposed to help with uh, bug control, insect right. control. Then we have some parsley. And I don't know how many people know about stevia, but if they would like to know that powdered white powder they buy in the store. Truvia, um, right? Yes. It's a it's, brand name when it's been processed right. and turned and into it, a powder. Yep, and it comes from that plant. <laughs> right. and, and the day in the park, we, we gave samples of the leaves to people it's and they sweet. put them on their tongue and it's like, wow, this is so sweet, almost bittersweet because right. it's so sweet. Right. But that's the plant there, so we were able to give them that. Mm -hmm. And we also harvested a lot of radishes um, that day. Um, to let people have those. Um, I'd also like to thank the, um, for all of our, our signage here, the Black Swamp um, Art Guild was so nice to, they saw the article in the paper that we were starting this and mm -hmm. they said, can we do this service for you? And so they painted all of our signs. I love signs. the signs, they just add a whimsical touch yes, to the garden. Yes, they do. They're so they, cute. They really do. <laughs> um, in the next bed, we have broccoli and um, we had to harvest that on Monday, so it was given to the senior center here in yeah. town. And behind the broccoli is kale, and I've harvested a lot of that, so it's still in the regrowing stage. Uh, then we have a row of different kinds of peppers, as the sign says. Mm -hmm. The green ones right there that are in the formative stage, those are Problano peppers. They're a mild, um, mildly hot pepper yeah. and on this end I har had to harvest these already those um, are um, the jalapenos right. then on the far end we have the regular green green pepper sweet pepper mm -hmm. behind that we have three tomato plants and some of those are getting ready behind that we on this end we have the cucumber and that end we have a butternut squash so and that we, is a lot of stuff in it, just a little space. A lot of people right. don't realize that you can grow so many different crops right. in such a small space. Right. We use the what's called square foot gardening mm -hmm. uh, method. And so uh, we really can squeeze a lot into a right. little space. The, the square foot gardening method really helps to cut down on weeds as well. Right. Exactly. Because they, they, they shade um, the area growing close together right. and then you don't have much weeding at all. <laughs> right, right. It's a, a very um, easy way 
to garden. Right. A lot less work than the traditional gardening methods. And the other thing that um, is neat about these gardens is you're not walking on the on soil, the right? Soil. We don't want to compact soil because that makes it more difficult for plants uh, to get their nutrients and the and the the root systems to grow. Right. And and right. so you want to keep it light and fluffy. Right. <laughs> so this is a really neat way um, to garden. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the goals and mission that you have for the community garden? Sure. Um, one of the things that uh, we want to promote is. Uh, eating healthy mm -hmm. and a lot of people especially living in apartments or in a, a small area don't have the opportunity to have a, a space where they can grow right. things and yet they'd like to eat um, freshly grown things and so we would like to see at least um, at this point, this stage in our development, uh, two main gardens, one on the east side and one on the west, that we can come together as a community and learn, if, for those that don't know how to garden, learn how to. Right. Those that are a little more seasoned, I guess mm -hmm. you'd say, um, have them uh, be mentors to the, uh, the others and enjoy the opportunity to, to grow and then taste the wonderful freshness of uh, right. growing your own things. Because it is a different experience to it taste is. produce that's so, so fresh. It's just almost a different type of delicious. <laughs> exactly. I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. And, and then you don't have, you know, some of the things that um, we deal with in our society today in food, it's transported from long distances. Right. And so right. you have no idea, you know, it's losing its nutrients Absolutely. during that transport um, time. and. Um, you don't get as many nutrients as you might otherwise. That's exactly right. So, Absolutely. yeah, right out of the garden into the pan and then into the tummy. <laughs> yep, garden to table. <laughs> right, right. So today um, we're actually going to use some of the different produce items that you have growing in your garden for what we're going to be preparing um, in our kitchen. We're going Yay. to be using kale Yay. for a, um, a kale grilled cheese sandwich. And then who can have a grilled cheese sandwich without tomato soup? So mm. we're going to be doing a roasted tomato and basil <laughs> soup. So um, we're going to be using some of the things that are abundant this time of year for um, the people that have gardens. And I especially like those three things because um, in my experience, those are three items that are really easy to grow. I agree. So they're we're going to use easy. all of those in our recipes today. Yeah, and they're very popular, especially the tomatoes. Absolutely. And it, and uh, as I was discussing with um, a group last night, I said most of the things we grow in the garden are fruits. Tomatoes are fruits. Peppers are fruits. Yeah. Because bot botanically. Right. Now my kale is a true vegetable. Yes. But a, <laughs> a wonder super vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> at that. Right. Right. <laughs> but it's so fun. Yeah. Now, if somebody's interested in being a part of the community garden, how can they contact you in order to be a part of that? Sure. Um, you can reach me by phone, and that's 419-633-9058 or um, um, by email, and it's a long email, but I'll say it, um, it's the letter J underscore McCarns, M-C-K-A-R-N-S, at Ameritech, A-M-E-R-I-T-E-C-H mm -hmm. dot net. Okay. All and right. I'd, love, I'd love to hear from anybody that would like to get involved with the Absolutely. community gardening efforts. Well, hopefully we have some viewers at home and at the hospital today that are interested in getting started. A garden. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thanks joining for having us today. Me. And we're going to go ahead back to the hospital and get cooking. Okay, yay! <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for joining me on that fun field trip out to the demo garden. So welcome back to the hospital. So now Jenny and I are going to show you how to prepare the grilled cheese sandwich with kale and the roasted tomato basil soup. So on the way over, Jenny and I were talking and we decided that you really needed some dill pickles with right. these recipes as well. So we're gonna um, add on the, the dill pickles today. But we have a busy, um, a busy schedule here, a lot of stuff to prepare, so we're going to get going right away with our um, soup. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I have an onion, and we need about two cups of it. So I have a very large onion. I might not need all of this. I might use just half of it. I'm going to turn on my heat source. You need a big, heavy... Um, 
pan here because we're going to be cooking a lot of soup. And I'm going to just drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there. You can always add more as you go. And peel the onion. I'm going to set that aside. And you're going to puree this, so you really don't have to chop pretty. Tomato soup is usually pureed, so um, I have a fancy tool that I'm going to show you how to puree with. So um, you can make this chopping as sloppy as you want, just no fingers in it, please. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to throw this into the pan and get that cooking. The goal is just to have it soften and turn a little brown, brown a little bit. And I'm also going to um, put a pinch of red pepper flakes. You can put as much or as little of this as you like. I like a lot of heat, but I know some people don't. So if you don't like any heat, then just don't add it at all. Um, so this is a different type of tomato soup. It's not your, you know, cream-based tomato soup. There's no cream in it at all. This is actually a vegan recipe, minus the chicken stock, but you can uh, swap out vegetable, vegetable broth. broth. But this would be vegan if you use vegetable broth instead of chicken broth. Okay. So I'm going to let that cook a couple seconds. And now we're going to get our tomatoes cooking. So this time of year, I always have a lot of tomatoes in my garden, and this is my go-to recipe to use all of those tomatoes that you harvest because it uses a lot of them. And um, I make this probably once a week when my tomatoes are in season, and then I freeze it. It freezes really well. I freeze it in mason jars, and then in December, when I'm in the mood for tomato soup, pull it out of the freezer and defrost it, and it tastes like August. So. A little bit of summer in the winter time. I'm going to make sure these don't burn. Okay. So to make this easy, we're actually going to roast our tomatoes and our garlic together. So I'm going to hand Jenny a couple tomatoes. And we're just going to cut them in half. This is really easy. Not a lot of prep here for the tomatoes. We're going to cut them in half and toss them onto our cookie sheet. Yeah, you can go ahead and cut that one too and toss it on. Our onions are starting to brown. This heat source is a little bit finicky at some times, but they're starting to brown a little bit. Now at home, you're probably going to want to do the tomatoes well in advance of starting the soup, but for today's purposes, um, and since I already have some tomatoes already cooked for me, I'm doing it all together. But the tomatoes do need to roast for about 45 minutes, so you'll want to do that first. So we have our tomatoes on here. Um, the recipe calls for about a quarter of a cup of olive oil um, to roast them. You can experiment with a little bit less if you'd like. And I'm just going to make sure that all the tomatoes are coated. And I'm going to actually hand Jenny a... She, um, the last time I worked with her, she broke the garlic apart really well. Um, so I'll just have you smash the garlic. You need about six garlic cloves. Um, and I just throw them, <laughs> there it goes. I just throw them right on the pan to roast. So you don't even have to do um, any chopping of the garlic. Um, you can just throw them right on the pan and they're going to roast all together. And then we're going to puree them into the soup at the end. So you're not going to get any big chunks of garlic because it's all going to be pureed. So you have some nice color to our onions. Do you want all the skin off? Yep, if you can get all the skin off, and I can actually take a couple too. Okay. I've got one, two, three, four, five. But she has five and I have one, so I'll take <laughs> one. <laughs> Make her do all the work. <laughs> there we go. And just smash them a little bit this, and try to peel. I just touched olive oil, so this makes the skin kind of slippery a little bit, huh? Yep. Goodness. 
some of them don't want to cooperate here. Okay, so throw a couple in there and we'll just, we can maybe even just get a couple on there today. I'll take another one. Yep. Okay. So once you have your tomatoes and your garlic on your rimmed cookie sheet and you're, they're drizzled with olive oil, you're going to pop them in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes until the skin starts to brown on the tops. And I have been known, if you have a really big stock pot, I have been known to like double this recipe um, or use extra tomatoes in here and cut out, we're gonna use a little canned tomatoes, but I have been known to cut out the canned tomatoes and just use fresh tomatoes. It gives it a little bit different taste, but um, you can adjust seasonings and salt and pepper to, um, to taste if you like. So again, this goes in the oven, but luckily our wonderful kitchen staff has prepared <laughs> some roasted tomatoes for us. And they look beautiful. And they look beautiful. So oh. this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. And our onions are ready, so now we're ready to dump all of our ingredients into the soup. So we're gonna start making our soup. So we have all of our roasted tomatoes in garlic. And then, I don't know, the, the original recipe, my sister gave me this recipe years ago and it had canned fire roasted tomatoes in it, um, 28 ounces, and it just gives it some extra flavor um, that I really like. It does add extra salt to it, so you could um, use the no sodium, um, or the, the no salt added tomatoes, or again, just add extra fresh tomatoes to it if you don't want to use canned at all. Um, so we have 28 ounces of um, canned tomatoes with our fresh tomatoes. Make sure you add the juice from the roasting in there as well. We're going to stir that up. We need some liquid in there, so four cups of chicken stock or veggie stock. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to have Jenny start to um, peel off some or pick some basil off. Um, this is a tomato basil soup, so we are going to use a lot of basil in it. This time of year, I yep, throw it right in. I have um, a ton of basil in my garden. Um, it's really easy to grow. Um, in fact, I'm gonna have Jenny in a couple of minutes talk about her basil, um, that she, she has a unique basil in her garden. It's a purple basil. You can use any wanna, type of- Do you wanna use some? Sure, why not? You can use any type of basil. It's purple basil. Yep. And we use a little bit and then maybe we can pass it around the room and let some people smell it, so. It's, it's a little more licorice flavor. Mm -hmm. And I did wash it, so. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but you do uh, mostly organic gardening, right? Right, we try so to I use um, as natural um, fertilizers yep. and things like that. As, and I'll pass this around because it's heavenly. Let's start at the back. So you need about four cups of basil, so that's a lot of fresh basil. Um, so I'd recommend finding someone, again, I make this only in the summertime and I freeze it for all winter. So I grow, I purposefully grow lots of basil and lots of tomatoes for this recipe. <laughs> so, and again, this is garden grown. Um, you can buy basil in the store. Sometimes it's a little bit more expensive or check your farm, the farmer's market for basil. Um, where else could you get basil? You could use dried basil if you wanted. Um, I'd cut, you would not add four cups of dried basil. Do right. not add four cups. Right. <laughs> Maybe try a tablespoon Yeah. first. I was gonna say, I'd do a lot of drying of my yeah. basil, and then it just cr crunch it up, mm -hmm. and it works really well that way too. Yep, um, start with a table, I've never done it, but start with a tablespoon, and see how that tastes. You can always add more if you want more of a basil flavor. So I would recommend the fresh basil, though, if you can get your hands on it. We're not really measuring how many cups we're, but, I know, but you know, we're just putting it in. <laughs> but you know, when I make this at home, I like I went out and I picked like the biggest bowl of basil that I could, and I just put as much basil as possible into my soup because I like a lot of basil. I have a ton of it right now, and it's so good for you. Um, Do we need any of this for the uh, the sandwich? No, we don't. Okay. So, bit for bit. Um, 
Um, herbs, they have so many antioxidants in them and so many protective um, compounds, phytonutrients, um, that I don't think you can get enough of them. So um, I'm also going to add a little bit of fresh thyme, which you also saw um, in the garden. Thyme is kind of a pain to get all these little tiny leaves off. You need about a tablespoon of thyme. That's probably good for the basil. That yep. look like four cups. Okay. Depends on if you, if yeah. you compress it or not in your cup. <laughs> so you see the basil kind of wilt down. This needs to simmer for about 30 minutes, give or take. Um, I'm going to keep doing my time, and I'm going to have Jenny start on our pickles real quick. Okay. So Jenny, if you'll pour, we have um, three and a half cups of water, and then um, we'll measure out some vinegar. And we have some measuring cups here if that's easier for you. That's kind of a, a large measuring cup. We need a cup and a quarter of just plain old white vinegar, distilled uh -huh. vinegar. So most people have that on hand. Is there any reason why it's the white? Does it change? the color in the uh, pickles? I or? don't know. Um, I suppose you could try, experiment with different types of vinegars. Um, yeah, it's a little stronger tasting I hear in the audience. So, I mean, all vinegars have a different flavor. So, um, you know, they might give your pickles a little bit different of a flavor, but you could try different types in there. I don't see why not. These are refrigerator pickles that we're making. So, did our paint turn off? Whoa. Oh, there we go. I think the gas was coming out. <laughs> you okay, right? Yep, okay. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, you could experiment with different types. Again, refrigerator pickles. So we're just making a small batch, and you're going to store them in your refrigerator. They go right into the refrigerator after you're done. Um, it takes three days for them to get their pickly flavor, and. Um, what do you think the refrigerator life is on them? I, the recipe, the original recipe said about six weeks. Okay. So, That's but in my house, they lasted like two. <laughs> That's why I started, all gone, right? yes. That's yeah. why I started making them because my, I have a three-year-old. He loves pickles. pickles. Like every night he's like, mommy, I want pickles and ice cream for a bedtime snack. <laughs> 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 I'm like, are you pregnant? <laughs> 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 this is a boy. <laughs> so no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I hate giving him like the ultra salty processed pickle. So I started, I'm like, I can make pickles. Yeah. So this is so easy. I don't think I'm ever buying pickles again. There's no reason to buy pickles with this recipe. We're also going to add a tablespoon of salt and just plain white sugar to the, the water. All right. How much do we add the sugar now? Yep. Okay. How much was that? A tablespoon. Right. Tablespoon of sugar. So really easy. Tablespoon of salt. Tablespoon of sugar. Uh, if you want to use like sea salt or Himalayan pink salt or whatever salt you want, go for it. It doesn't really matter. Um, any type of salt will work in here. But that's it. That's it for the brine. That's all you do. And now we're going to get our pickles ready. So this has to heat up a little bit to dissolve the sugar and the salt. Um, so let's add the dill first. So we have some fresh dill. How much would you like in there? All, all of it. it? Okay. Yeah, just put all of it in. Um, you can also use like the flour part of the dill when it's starting to go to seed. I've also put that in there. Um, I hit the seeds with my um, chef knife to kind of release some of the oils in them. Um, yep, so she's putting the, we have some already sliced cucumbers, so we're going to throw um, as many cucumbers as we can fit in that in. jar. And then I'm going to come over here and steal a clove or two of garlic. And I'm going to also smash the garlic. And just throw couple cloves of garlic in there. We could 
put a lot more, but that's what we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you would go yep, yeah. Jar. So, yeah, you'll probably need a lot more. I think the, your recipe calls for four cups of pickles. So, as many pickles as you can fit in this liquid, you can use. And we're using a mason jar. Um, but any type of container would work fine. Um, you just need all of the pickles to be covered by the liquid. So and as long as you let this cool really well, because right. if it's plastic, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, that does bring up a good point. Um, yeah, you don't want to dump hot liquids into to plastic because it can release some of the plastics plastic. chemicals yeah. into um, your food. So if you're, you are using plastic, don't put hot liquids into it. Probably should use glass but yeah this is supposed to cool um, first which again the main point of heating this is just to dissolve the sugar so and the salt I don't really think it needs to come to a boil it looks pretty well looks pretty dissolved mm -hmm. I'm gonna stir our soup our soup looks beautiful everything's simmering together so I think we'll just turn this off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually use my measuring cup here, I think. And you should let this cool first, but we're just gonna assume that it's cooled. <laughs> and you just dump that right on top. The other thing about glass, when you put a hot liquid into a glass, Really, anyway, you should make sure uh, the liquid is cool before you put it in, or at least cool enough. Um, any temperature, extreme temperature changes with glass can cause the glass to uh, break. So um, you don't necessarily want to put an extremely hot liquid directly into a mason jar. So do let it cool a little bit before transferring. So it's all covered. So you can put the lid on if you'd like. I'll just put it on loosely. So. Steam can escape, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there's our pickles. So They're you just, beautiful. yeah. How easy was that? Why would you buy pickles when you can make them fresh like right. that? Pickles or cucumbers are available all year round. So, I sorry, Blasic. <laughs> <laughs> Mama can make pickles. <laughs> so, so there's our pickles. So now we're going to get started with our grilled cheese while this is still simmering away. And I have promised you over and over again, we will use kale. <laughs> One of these days, you will learn about kale. Kale, um, it's really, you know, touted as quite the superfood. Um, I think bite for bite, kale has probably more nutrients than any other vegetable. Um, it's particularly rich in vitamin A, um, especially lutein and zeaxanthin, which are really good for your eyes and help to prevent uh, macular degeneration. Um, low calorie, there's actually some protein in kale too, about three grams per, per cup raw. Um, when you cook it down, it concentrates um, all the nutrients as well. So you don't want to cook it too long, though. Um, and there's so many things you can do with it. I, I love, yeah. I have a kale salad that I just love, and it's raw. You don't have to cook it first, and it's great. Yeah. I do like, um, I do like tender kale if I'm going to eat it raw. Right. Um, the smaller leaves. <laughs> the smaller leaves. Um, I have some kale in my garden, and like the leaves are like the size of my arm. <laughs> so it's not exactly tender, so cooking it is um, a little Preferred. bit more ideal. Yeah, um, I'm going to have you hand me that big sure. red skillet. And this is heavy. This is a heavy wow. skillet, yeah. So, um, and go ahead and take you can, yeah, okay. you can, and we can use some green. We're going to use a little purple and a little green. I'll take a little bit. Now, in this recipe, it calls for a pound. You don't really need a pound. You can use however much kale you like. Um, I would suggest if you're new to kale, um, maybe start with a smaller amount. But if you're a seasoned kale lover, you can use a little bit more. Um, I'm going to turn our heat on real quick. Add a little bit of olive oil. Um, some kale, depending on the size, is going to have like a tough um, like stalk. You don't necessarily want that. You can remove the tough stalk. And it may be bigger you know, or smaller on some leaves. So again, I just kind of pulled that little tough part out. Um, 
I've also heard that if you sprinkle a little salt on the kale leaf and rub it together, it can sometimes help to tenderize. So That's you what can, I do for the salad. Okay, tenderize yeah. It, yeah. So you can give that a try if you'd like. So again, just um, again, take some kale, a few cups at least, um, it up to, it does cook down, it cooks down more than you think it will. So um, and then just run your knife through it, give it a quick chop. Again, if you're new to kale, you may want to start with smaller pieces. Um, so if you're nervous about putting kale in a grilled cheese sandwich, my three-year-old loved it. <laughs> my kids ate it. My one-year-old and my three-year-old both ate a grilled cheese sandwich with kale in it. So it has to be okay, right? And everybody in our audience has tried it. And I know that the, um, the kale sandwiches today had, were pretty heavy on the kale. So again, if you were thinking, oh, that's a little bit too much kale for me, you can always put a thinner layer of kale in it. Um, you want the roast? So, yeah, you can go ahead and throw that in there. Other things that you can do with kale, um, my family likes it in pasta sauces. So um, I will make a spaghetti sauce and I'll chop up kale real fine. I'll, you don't want to put too much in because then it gets a little weird, but like two cups of kale into a spaghetti sauce and I'll usually put meat in there as well and any other vegetables, onion, zucchini, eggplant, peppers, mushrooms, whatever you have on hand. Like this is clean out your refrigerator night, um, whatever vegetables you have. And I mean, we do it probably once a week and my kids love it and it's a great way. I mean, they're eating kale, they're eating tomato sauce and um, mushrooms and onions and you know all sorts of things that you're like, kids eat that? Well, if you give it to them and make it taste good, then yeah, usually they will. Um, and I always like to talk, and I may have said this before, but it takes 15 times of being exposed to a new food, at least sometimes more, to um, really learn to like it. So, you know, a lot of parents will give their kids something and they're like, ah, oh, they don't like it, I'm never trying that again. <laughs> so don't stop there, keep trying it, keep exposing them to it because, you know, they might not like it at first, but eventually they may learn to like it. I have my one-year-old will not touch fresh fruit <laughs> right now wow. and it makes me so angry. <laughs> he, he eats fruit, don't get me wrong, he eats fruit, but I have to I have to prepare it in special ways. I puree it and I put it in squeeze pouches and I bake it into oatmeal and I go through all this effort to get him to eat fresh fruit. And he, he does, but I, put, I still put fresh fruit in front of him because I know one day he will pick it up and he will, he will like it. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have the kale cooking there. Okay, so the next thing we have to do, and the last thing, is build our sandwiches. So um, you can saute this as much or as little as you want. I think we're gonna stop here. Um, it's wilted down pretty well, and it, you can see some um, brown pieces in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm actually gonna turn this off. And I have a grill pan. You could just use a regular griddle or skillet or whatever. It just um, looks prettier. With yeah, it'll have the it. pretty lines on it. Yeah. I have Make one sure of these too. Too on. <laughs> and I'm going to drizzle a little olive oil and brush it over my grill pan. And then we're just going to take a slice of bread and put it on down and a slice of cheese. We have mozzarella cheese. The mozzarella goes really well with the tomato basil soup. If you wanted them. In the we're middle. gonna put one okay. on the bottom. Oh, how many do we have there? Just, Just two? two? Okay, we have two small slices. So then I'm gonna take um, a spoonful of kale here and put it right on top. And then we can take the other slice of cheese, put that on top of the kale, and our other slice of bread. And then if you'll hand me the bowl of olive oil, we'll give the top slice 
a quick brush of olive oil. So the healthy monounsaturated fats in olive oil, be, you know, the traditional butter that you, you know, would usually use on a grilled cheese sandwich, but you could use the um, regular butter as well. But I think brushing it with olive oil is even just a little bit easier than, um, than spreading it with butter. So, so now, um, once your soup has uh, simmered for about 30 minutes, it's time to blend it. So it's pretty chunky now, not your idea of tomato soup. Um, you can either transfer in batches um, into a blender, or you can, if you have one of these, does anybody know what this is? This is an immersion blender. So there's a blade. <laughs> this is my most favorite tool. <laughs> and you just stick it right into the pot. <laughs> got one last year. I was tired of dumping my hot soup into a blender and trying yeah. to blend it that way. I was always getting splashed or burned. So I got one and it's wonderful. It makes life yeah, so much it easier. Yeah, it does. For any type of cream soup, it makes it so much easier if you have one of these. They're not terribly expensive. They range in prices. Sure. You can find them for as little as like 20 or 30 bucks probably. Actually, if you have a, a cup that's sturdy enough and big enough, you can make a smoothie right in the cup and use this. Oh, and I might have you flip our, yeah. lose the track of our sandwich. We'll flip it over. Hopefully it's, whoo, it's perfect. <laughs> it's good How's the kale? Oh, it's great. Good. And I, you know, I forgot, you can sprinkle a little, I put a little salt on the leaf, but you can sprinkle a little extra salt and pepper in the kale too, if you want, you don't have to. So basically you just keep blending the soup until it's to your desired consistency. Usually people like their tomato soup to be kind of chunk free. Um, so you may want to keep blending it a little bit more if you're doing this at home. Um, I think in our kitchen they use um, a Vitamix. So a really you know, powerful blender to get out every single chunk. I don't mind a few chunks myself. So, um, but whatever you prefer. You can also run it through if you have like a food mill does anybody know what a food mill is? That thing that you pour it in, it has a crank and you turn it. You can do something like that as well. And um, that works perfectly too. So, so now we've been on a field trip to the garden. We've showed you how to use several ingredients from the garden, our tomato, basil, cucumbers, kale. Um, so, you know, I hope that you all feel empowered to go home now and maybe start your own garden. Um, a couple things I didn't mention about kale. Kale t does really well in a container. You can grow it in a container. So if you're not you know, sure you want to um, start a big garden yourself, you know, try a container with kale in it. Or send in your information to Jenny right. <laughs> and we'll get, you know, get involved in the community garden, which they hope to uh, have running next summer. So you hope to have people there to um, help instruct Right. a little bit so if you're not familiar with gardening we can give you some hints yes. so, thank you all so much for joining us today and thank you so much jenny for being a part of this well thank so, you for having me i appreciate it can we turn this off i don't want to break absolutely <laughs>